Hey guys, it's me, Will Patson. In this video brought to you by Skillshare, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this cool illustration slash logo. It's really simple to do in any vector program. I'm gonna be using Illustrator. So watch to the end to know how we do it and how to export it. The first thing we're gonna do is get some sketch paper. It doesn't matter what you have. It could be rough paper, graph paper, whatever. We're gonna sketch out some ideas just using a box. It's really important to sketch because you don't have all the distractions of the tools and shapes that you have in Illustrator. So just get some sketching on the go, get a nice composition in there if you like it. If you want a building in there, put a building in there. If you want some mountains in there, just put some basic shapes of some mountains. So now we have a structure for our work and we can go straight back into the computer and start vectorizing the work. Go ahead and create yourself any sort of art one. It doesn't really matter because it's all vector. The first thing we want to do is just create a sort of rectangle. I'm just going to create this rectangle here. Now, the most important thing is to get rid of this fill. So over here on the left, we have the fill and we have the stroke. In Illustrator, we need to press this button right here, which means none. That means that we do not have any white inside of the shape. If we had it as so, and we've dragged it up here off the artboard, you would notice it has a white fill. But if we press this, it gets rid of it. The next thing is to calculate how thick the stroke should be. So we do that by going up here, I'm going down to 20. That looks good to me. But have you noticed that the actual stroke is on the inside of the shape? Sometimes you want that, but this time we don't. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to stroke options up here. You should be able to click on it. Now we have a line stroke to center inside or outside. We're just gonna do center for now and you'll see it shift out. This blue line is called the path and that should be on the inside of the stroke. Now, if we're gonna create a cool line artwork like this to be scalable, but interesting at the same time, we need to create some harmony. And we do that by repeating shapes at a certain distance for consistency. So I'm gonna to go to the line tool, which is just here. This is a great tool just to have on hand. We also wanna go up to view and down to smart guides and make sure smart guides are turned on. What that does is it, you see that magenta path thing there on my cursor? It's telling me that it will snap to that. We wanna keep that on. I'm gonna create some lines from the left to right holding shift and that just keeps it at the horizontal and vertical and 45 degree axis, just means it keeps it nice and straight. I'm gonna actually bring this down a couple of points to probably 18. We don't know how thick we want it yet, but I know I do want the actual box to be a bit thicker than that. We wanna duplicate them at the same distance apart. And we can do this by holding Option or Alt and holding Shift. And when we drag, it will keep it on that vertical axis and it will give us a duplicate of that thing that we've just selected. Now, if I let go, we don't have to repeat that process. We can press Command D all the way down. And every time we press Command D, it will duplicate the line at that specific distance every time. Now we've got our lines. Anything that's horizontal, I'm gonna just scale down by one stroke. I've just taken these horizontal lines there and brought them down by one stroke or one point. Because of the way that our brains see horizontal lines, it makes them look thicker than the vertical ones, which is very odd. Okay, so now we have these grid lines. Now, what I'm gonna do is based on my drawing, I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these lines because I want a box down here. Now, in order for this to work, we need consistency within these lines. So that is why we're using these lines as a kind of grid. And in fact, I'm gonna just copy, I'm gonna highlight these two, copy and paste. I'm going to rotate and just drag this down for the side element here as well, because I want some vertical lines going here too. I'm going to drag these back around. I'm going to drag these two lines over to this side too. I'm going to delete these other lines that we've put on top of there just to keep consistency. And with these center lines, I'm just going to hold option and drag them into the center like so. And I'm going to drag another line down. I'm just going to try and get this to fit nicely into a nice composition. These center lines need to actually move in because you don't want all that stuff in there and that's looking pretty good okay so now we've got a bunch of straight lines we need to have some squiggly lines in there to break it up a little bit and it will look like water as well so the easiest way of doing this that i found is to use the straight line tool again so we'll come down and we're going to go up to effect distort and transform zigzag and press smooth on this box here and now we're going to start messing around with this just so we can get the right amount of ridges and segments in there. I don't want the ridges to be too crazy. Something like that will do. Press OK, and we're just going to duplicate the, this down again as well. And in fact, I might increase the size of the bottom here. Again, nothing is set in stone, but I'm just duplicating these down too, 
just so we have a bit of a difference down here. And in fact, I'm gonna just make this a bit wider as well. Now we've got the squiggly lines, I want to focus on these margin areas here for my illustration. We need some texture in there, but if I just go ahead and add another line, so if I duplicate this line, it's kind of too thick. And a way to fix that is to take this whole square on the outside, hold Alt or Option and just drag out ever so slightly. We can just drag the rest of this out so it fits. Now we can drag a line into here, getting it into the center of this shape, and it's not too thick at all. If you'd like to better your portfolio, become a better designer, learn tips and tricks from some of the best professionals and creatives out there, then Skillshare is the place for you. Skillshare has thousands of courses taught by industry professionals. I've got a class on Skillshare too. It's all about generating iconic logo design ideas. But you've got people like Ian Barnard with hand lettering and taking your script lettering to the next level. You've got Ali Abdal on there talking about productivity. You've even got learning paths. Learning paths allow you to learn something like Procreate from many different classes and they're all grouped together. It takes you on a really good learning curve. But the coolest thing about Skillshare is that they now offer one-on-one -on -one sessions with teachers. So anyone can receive personal portfolio reviews, career coaching, mentoring. It's amazing. In fact, I recently just finished filming with Skillshare a personal portfolio review for many different people. We would have a look at the portfolio. We would see what they could do to do better, to see what problems we could solve. A lot of them were easily solvable. Portfolio reviews are for everyone, including you. No portfolio is too rough on you. And one-on-ones are a great opportunity to unblock yourself and to see whether you're going in a safe direction with your portfolio. It's a friendly space and the teachers can tailor the session to your needs. So if you'd like to check out the one-on-ones, click the link down below. And if you wanna check out the learning paths, the, all of the Skillshare classes and the one-on-ones, then the first 500 people to click the link in the description can get a free trial of Skillshare which means you can watch my class, which you should definitely do. Okay, back to the video. I'm gonna use the pen tool here, and I'm gonna just press and hold shift to create this little nugget here. I quite like that. It's gonna look like kind of like a pine tree, and I don't care that it's too close to here. We can worry about that later. But what if I wanted to reflect it onto its other side to create this sort of pattern going up? Well, the easy way is to select it, press O, which brings up the reflect tool. I'm gonna hold Alt, and using our smart guides, which should automatically be snapping to this anchor point, we're gonna hold Alt and click, and you'll get this box that pops up. Press vertical and press copy. Then once you've done that, it will perfectly reflect that little stroke that we've made to the left. We're gonna just shift click both of these and press Command G to group them. Now they will act as one shape. All I'm simply gonna do is hold Alt, and we're gonna duplicate and drag up, holding shift as well to keep that line up. Then I'm gonna click it again and press Command D, and it's going to repeat again all the way up, giving us a nice pattern on the right. I'm going to select all of this, and I'm actually going to just shove it over to the left, holding Shift and Option. Super simple. As you've probably started to notice, a lot of this work is based on just repeating shapes over and over to create cool texture. Okay, now I want a building in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and get my rectangle tool up. I'm just going to kind of draw a building around here. The problem is we've got lines in the middle here and that can get quite annoying. So what I'm going to do is add a fill inside of this shape here on top. You could do this by going to the swatches panel, making sure you're on this fill. It has the line in it saying that there's no fill, just one stroke and we can press white and that will give us the illusion that there's no lines in the background. As long as your background color is white, it will work. Okay, what if I wanted to create a point on top here? Well, an easy way of doing that is to add another anchor point and we could just press plus and then find the center and add an anchor point. But if you want to go more accurate, we can select the shape, go up to object, path, add anchor points, and that will add anchor points to the whole shape in between the other anchor points. So now we have them here and here. I'm just going to go do this and drag this up, holding shift ever so slightly. I like that. I'm going to drag the whole shape down again as well, just so it fits a nice line there. I'm going to go press Command R, which will show the rulers, and I'm going to drag a guide directly into the middle anchor point here, because I want to know the middle line. And that's so we can do some isometric work. Using the pen tool, I'm going to just select this part here. I'm going to just eyeball this and just do this. And we're going to move this spot to where it looks like it is perfect. There are other ways we can do this to make sure the angles match up that are probably better, but this is the easiest method to do it. Boom. Now to create 
the full effect. We'll create another line. So using the line tool, we'll create a line coming straight down here. Boom, we've created a sort of building here. Now these lines in the background are cool, but I'm gonna just group them together and then press command two to lock them. That means that I don't have to mess around with them anymore. So if I wanna select this building, I can easily select it without selecting the lines. Then using the anchor point tool, I'm gonna to drag this. We're gonna just mess around with the size of this. This is the brilliant thing about vector. We can just do whatever we like to. Ooh, that's interesting. This is very interesting. But we're just moving this around to get the right size of this, wherever we sort of want it. Nice. I'm gonna add another line. I'm actually gonna take this line here we're going to just drag that all the way up so it feels like the building actually has a bit of definition to it and then simply i'm going to draw another rectangle here press e and we're going to just transform this up like so i bet you've never seen this tool before but we're just going to eyeball this it doesn't need to be perfect every single time now the main thing that we've got to keep an eye on is keeping all the stroke lengths basically the same however when we do do perspective warps it is kind of recommended to just lower the stroke value by one just because it gives the illusion that the stroke is the same value all the way around i'm going to just duplicate that again we're just going to move this down like so that's nice i'm going to select this shape we're going to reflect it again to the other side of the building select the shape find the anchor point in the middle hold alt press copy make sure it's on the vertical axis preview it and press copy for this one i don't want it to be just the same so i'm going to grab both of these anchor points by shift clicking i'm just going to drag this down so it matches like so that looks pretty cool in fact we're going to highlight all this and shove it up and down just to get it right now with these other lines, I feel like the definition has been lost. So I'm going to add some new lines from the top here down. Whenever I create a line on one side, I'm going to reflect it perfectly on the other side by selecting that line and again, doing the reflect. And I'm going to actually decrease this by one point as well to make it look good. So we have a bit of detail in there. And feel free to decrease it as much as you think you need to. But generally speaking, we want to keep the line weight consistent throughout the whole thing. Now, if we want to create some text on the top here, like I showed you at the start, simply draw a square from the top here or a rectangle. And we're going to fill it with white. I'm going to call this N920. I'm going to drop it in here. Change the font to something that you like. I'm going to choose this one, which I quite enjoy at the moment. Making sure the font weight, this bold one here, is similar to the line weight will actually make it look a lot more cohesive. Now, one thing I've noticed is that this is kind of doing something weird here. So we're going to drag these down ever so slightly. What that does is it gives it a nice sort of patterning look. Just dragging it down. It doesn't need to be fully symmetrical. As you see, the building isn't fully symmetrical. Anything that does in an illustration kind of looks weird so we need a nice rough balance there now this line weight is a bit different so i'm going to just bring this back up to the normal one like so now if we look at this it kind of looks a bit strange when i duplicate it we've got some white in there so what i'm going to do is highlight everything by duplicating it and then i'm going to go to object path and we're going to outline the stroke and that's going to turn those strokes into actual shapes if I select this white shape here, you can see that there's a group there. So we need to ungroup that and get rid of this white shape here. So if we want to export this logo, we simply just have to select everything. Make sure that we unlock our guides at the back or these lines by pressing Command Alt 2. Now I'll unlock them. We're going to Shift Click Alt Drag. And we're going to go Object Path Outline Stroke. Now, anything with this white looks weird. We can't export it like that. We want it to be transparent so we can put it on different colors and things. So we're gonna select this and we're going to notice that it's a group. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna ungroup this, select the white and get rid of that white. But when we do that, there's a problem with the behind of it. Remember, we were just creating this illusion. So what we actually need to do is select everything with the white on it. And we're gonna press Shift and M, which will give us the Shape Builder tool. When we press Alt, you'll notice that the cursor goes to minus. And when we press Alt and drag, it will delete the white from the shapes. Now this can take a bit of time, so feel free, Matthias, to fast forward this part of the video. And once you've gotten rid of all of the white there, we're going to outline our text. So deselect, select your text. We're going to right click and outline. That will convert the text into shapes. I notice there's a tiny bit of white here still, which is uncommon. Let's get rid of that tiny sliver of white. 
Next, we're gonna highlight everything and we're gonna to go to the Pathfinder and unite everything there too. If you wanna go even further with this, with it all selected, press A, which will give you the direct selection tool. Go to corners and just add one to the corners. And you'll notice that everything has a nice even roundness in each corner, giving it a more vintage look. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about this, then go ahead and check out Skillshare. There's so many classes, including my own. And if you do want more design tutorials like this, then feel free to press subscribe, leave a comment down below. Please share the video and I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon. Goodbye.